Welcome, everyone, to the KQ Show Fantasy Cast with Retro and the Queez, Episode 2. This week, we're going to dive into the AFC South. So, I, I was born and raised to watch the Bears, then Colts. My dad was like, we watch Fox, then CBS. That's just how it was. So, you know, uh, in my heart, there's a spot for the Colts. But uh, I had to take all that bias out. You know, it's a, it's a rule. Uh, if you didn't listen to episode one, um, you got to get rid of your bias, you know, just because I took Sean Green, S-H-O-N-N-E, for Justin Hemrick. You remember that. You laughed right at my face. Uh, sometimes you draft somebody and you regret it, but you can't use that against you, you know. So uh, so we'll dive right in here. Um, AFC South. So um, I want to talk about the Indianapolis Colts. So... Uh, Oh, there's no E, just S H O, and he's really like he's really just looked up. Sean I was Green. like, wait, he just spelled. That. I was like, wait, literally S H O N N. No, didn't even bother with the E. He's, he's, we don't even need the E. He'd be Shahon. Yeah, yeah. You, you, who took Sean? Yeah. <laughs> the Green has an E though. Yeah, well, you know, maybe that's where you got. There's maybe a couple E's in there. <laughs> oh man, what a year that was. I lost. I was. I was lost all that entire year. It was really bad. Uh, so anyway, so let's let's get kicked off. Um, the number one overall player picked in, I would say, 99% of all drafts is our boy, Jonathan Taylor, also known as Jonathan Taylor Tool Time, if you will. Let's talk about his 2021 stats. Um, the fucking monster averaged 22 fantasy points a game, 1,811 yards, uh, on a league high 332 carries, and combine that with 18 rushing touchdowns. Throw in 40 receptions for 360 and two touchdowns. So, JTT got us 20 touchdowns last year. Biggest question, possible regression with number one RBs. So, fun stat, since Priest Holmes 20 years ago, the 2002 and 2003 uh, NFL season, no running back has gone back-to-back since then. So, Nope. It is bananas to think um, what the potential this guy can do. Um, my first question is, Retro, do you foresee a decline, like a regression, or a higher ceiling with what the Colts have done with, uh, I guess you could say with what they've done at QB? Which I we'll think he's very safe at the mm-hmm. number one overall pick. I mean, we talked previously, I think Christian McCaffrey's in play. Yeah, if yep. he told me, and he probably is the number one overall pick in my opinion, just based on where he's getting picked. But and that's going to be hot take. But Mm-mm. um, and the crazy thing with is with Jonathan Taylor is the first three weeks of the season, he had fourteen point six, five point eight, and seven point seven points and half point PPR, and then went bananas. Where he went 18.9, 30.4, 28.3, 18, like, and then he had the 51 or 52 point game. He had the he had the, the record for back to back. How many was it back to back two touchdown games? Or as there was so many, he, yeah, had, he had so many two so, touchdown games in a short span. Yeah. Um, My draft you want, things appreciate I mean, that. if you want to, in best ball, I'm taking him number one overall. Yeah. Only because I know I don't have a lot of shares of him. So mm-hmm. if I'm the first one, yeah. I have to take yeah. him at one. As opposed to Christian McCaffrey, where if I'm at two, three, four, maybe even five, Mm -hmm. I can get him there. So, like, I can get my shares. But that's best ball. We'll explain that at some point. But I think he's totally a safe pick. I think he's – I mean, yeah, they got Matt Ryan, who's probably an upgrade from Carson Wentz, but it's probably Phillip Rivers. Now, how many MVPs does Phillip Rivers have? Oh, okay. I mean, how many I'm deep balls about, does Phil Rivers throw? I mean, I think Matt Ryan's better, but yeah. like, <laughs> well, well, no. I mean, I think Matt Ryan's better from when Philip Rivers was in the Colts. But yeah, like, maybe prime Philip Rivers. I maybe, mean, but. yeah, but he's. I mean, and granted, he has a way better offensive line because yes. Matt Ryan is a statue. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. So, I think Jonathan Taylor is what he is. Mm-hmm. Like, draft him number one overall and be happy with yeah. it. Yeah, like, he's not. It's not. It's not a year you you have to think about and things. If it's, and if it's me, and learn this too. Like, you don't have to do it this way. You don't. It's your own draft. Mm-hmm. But if I draft Jonathan Taylor first overall, and unless somebody crazy falls to me on the turn, because learning to draft there, I typically go wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver, like Mark Andrews or something, because mm-hmm. I have my anchor. Like, yeah. if 
if you pass again on a on a wide receiver, in a, and especially in half point or full point PPR, you're waiting another twenty two yeah. mm-hmm. picks, and that's a whole lot of yeah. wide receivers coming off the board with people that drafted running backs in the mm-hmm. first and second round. They're all going wide receiver there. You almost have to double tap it, and that's okay. Like that's not. Don't feel like oh shit, I didn't get a. You have fucking right. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, he's worth two running backs. You can mm-hmm. the the who was it? Um, who was the top running back? Oh, Elijah David or Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. Who was like, you can find free agents, especially in running mm-hmm. backs, to be your RB2. There's as seven long... that are starting in Miami. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Or it was like um, Tim Hightower two years ago or three years Peyton ago, whenever Willis. it was. Like, yeah, you can. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you can find anybody. RB2s, James Robinson? in my opinion, I always, like, unless, like, somebody falls to me that I really value or I think it is, and this is kind of going off the Colts thing, more like a guideline, but... I think finding an RB2 is easier than finding two solid wide receivers later. Yeah. I like, agree because with that. Yeah. people get hurt. Mm-hmm. You can hit the free. Now, finding that anchor, Jonathan Taylor, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, finding that is hard. That's why you draft those yeah. guys. But finding, like, you'll, you'll see the end of, you know, the season, the guys who were wide receiver or running backs one through five were probably guys that weren't even drafted. Right. I'm being dead serious. No, 100%. So anyway, no, I, I totally I agree. I went on a diatribe there, but like when that comes to it, I should have put that in the guideline portion of the last episode, but that's something, if you draft Jonathan Taylor, go pass catcher, pass catcher. Yep. It could be a tight end because you're waiting another 22 picks. Yeah, you can't. You're stuck from a some, roster stuck construction yep. situation, yeah. it's ugly. Yeah. Now, now you know. I mean, behind uh, behind you, you got Naeem Hines. Um, you know, also also great pass catcher. You know, best ball guy. You know, we can talk about yeah. that another episode. Uh, He's gonna have his games, you know, but I mean, and Philip Lindsay and, signed a little one year deal. Yeah, I don't see him. He might have a game you know, or right, whatever. Right. You know, so so there could be like maybe a little bit of dent in there. Maybe if they want to like for some fatigue for 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 JTT. But I don't think uh, as a human, he's he gets tired or uh, has any weaknesses. <laughs> so knock on wood. Yeah, um, but no. So let's talk. Let's talk about uh, Mr. Matty Ice. So um, average draft pick, he's looking at about twenty-one. So I mean, twenty-one. If you think about all the starting quarterbacks, uh, amazing offensive line, monster running back. He's got amazing weapons, and he's taking twenty-one. Not a bad pick. If you know, you look at how deep that is. So maybe if you know you want to go, maybe you miss on your your main QB guy. He, he's not terrible. No, uh, I, I wouldn't say he's. You know, uh, I'm not going to say he's. It'd be rough. Maybe to, he might possibly touch maybe top ten, probably top twelve. But um, you know, but but I mean, he's good. So uh, I think what's going to help him is let's talk about his weapons. So Mr. Michael Pittman. So this cat, um, I think he's I think he's phenomenal. Um, I had such high hopes for him, uh, but he had that uh, Carson. Where did he wince uh, playing for him? <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Pittman here, he's going uh, 16th wide receiver overall, or uh, 16th wide receiver, 42 overall. So you can scoop Pittman in the uh, pretty much uh, fourth round. Um, he's being drafted before Deontay Johnson, and he's uh, getting drafted right amongst your McLaurins, your uh, currently your DJ Moores. So the big question everybody has is, hey, you know, uh, is he a true number one? So last year, with a shitbag QB, uh, well, let's just say shitty QB play. I don't want to say anybody's a terrible player. Because, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can't do anything they can. But uh, with shitty QB play last year, he pulled in 1,000 yards and six TDs. So enter in Matty Ice, who loves to throw to big receivers. So Pittman, 6'4", 225. Monster. So let's just chat real quick about the size of uh, the, Matt, the, the Matt Ryan era. Julio, 6'2". Tony Gonzalez, 6'5". Or Michael Jenkins, 6'4". Oh, yeah. Uh, Calvin Ridley, six foot, uh, six one. Roddy White, I was about to six say, foot. Right, right, my favorite. So, I mean, every single the, the his best receivers have been over six foot, and we're talking about a cat that's six four, two twenty five, and I think he ran a four and some change. Oh no, yeah, he was. so I think he's got the skill. Um, he's he, he's a good route runner. But his run after catch upside is huge. Um, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know the exact stats on run after catch. There's a lot of metrics to look up for that. But uh, the end of the story is, is I think he's got the, I think he's set up to be probably prime. I think he could be a top, easily a top five wide receiver. Um, I think there's a higher ceiling, possibly, but I, I, it would not surprise me to catch him as a top five when when you're drafting him in the fourth round. Yeah, I see him. Um... 
he broke out last year. So like people are like waiting for him to break out. He had a thousand yards and six touchdowns. He broke out. Like that's a breakout. With out. terrible QB. Ball. Yeah. So he broke out. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be mm-hmm. better under under Matt Ryan. I don't know. He's like his his ceiling is definitely wide receiver one. The Colts like to run the ball. They have Jonathan Taylor. So like how much are they really gonna throw the ball? Like you need like Justin Jefferson has 163 targets. Mm-hmm. Is Michael Pittman going to get 163 targets? Like, meaning, and I agree with you. I, mm. I'm all for him in the fourth yeah. round. Uh, meaning, I don't know if top five is his ceiling. I think wide receiver one would be a ceiling. I think like I mean, in top that, five receiver. I, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, think, I, mean, like, I don't mean. I don't mean. Yeah, I mean top. I top, think, top five wide I receiver. I think finishing in that eight to twelve range, which would still be a steal. Yeah. You know, um, is his ceiling? Yeah. Um, now you have. Paris Campbell there. Or, or, wait, wait, I, I, I wrote that down. Paris Campbell doesn't really see targets, and I'm not going to waste my time, uh, but I think he'll be easily outshined by Alec, Alec Pierce. Pierce. Let me talk, because I, I bet you have more stats than I do on this, and I'm glad. Uh-huh. So this, this cat drafted uh, second round out of Cincinnati. Let's talk about his size. 6'3", 211, and he runs a four fucking four. Yeah. So he's And he, he's been on in college to go up and get it. And just by... Uh, Watching uh, like some of the mini camps and everything, Matt Ryan loves him. Yeah, he, uh, which which we'll talk a little. Uh, I'll touch a little bit on tight end, but I think we're going to see less of Mo Ali Cox, which also, by the way, six five two seventy. Oh yeah, play, <laughs> so, play basketball. He, exactly. He's like a uh, he's he's a he's a he's a, he's play a, at, uh, a he looks like Bigfoot running around out there. Did he play at VCU? I think or something. He's a monster. Oh, yeah. is what he, he looks like a monster. Yeah, what he he looks like. But uh, but no. So Alec Pierce, you know. Um, Big red zone threat. Um, been in mini camps been doing good. Um, Ryan's been loving to throw him in the red zone. Is he good enough to hold the number two spot, or is he going to be faded because it's a run heavy offense? What are your thoughts there? Um, I think he could. He'll see the field. Mm-hmm. Well, he has to. Yeah. It's just so you know. You, you, with camp reports, Paris Campbell looks good, but no, he's been looking yeah. good the last three years. I feel like he's been playing for 10 years. Yeah, I, I mean, the guy has a lot of talent. He just can't stay healthy. Um, but I've been taking him late because I'm creepy like that. But uh, I mean, he might have, yeah, this no, might be the but year. But going to Alec Pierce, I think he'll have his games. That's why he's more of a best ball candidate. But from a redraft standpoint, I think they're going to be so – much more run heavy. I don't think Matt Ryan supporting a two wide, re- like unless there's injuries involved or something to that effect. Mm-hmm. I, it's worth taking a flyer on late. If like, for, cause where he's being drafted, he's, he's late, 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 late. Yeah. Like, so he's like, like, he could be your last pick probably. Late. So yeah. So like you can take him, but I don't think Matt Ryan supporting like he did Julio and Roddy white, like he did with the Falcons. Right. It's not, he's not that Matt Ryan anymore. Um, I think he's definitely intriguing in best ball, and I think he's intriguing in dynasty. Um, but I think Michael Pittman's the guy. Oh yeah, I one hundred percent agree. No, so do I? will wrap it up like I said, like with, with Mo Alley. You know, I, I like Mo Alley Cox, man. He's just a monster, six five two seventy. He's he's just a beast. Um, but tight ends for the Colts, man. I, I, I try. I try to stay away from him because they, you know. Statistically, they throw. They have. They always have like twelve or thirteen. Yeah. Okay, they have like, like the they, Bears. As yeah, far they as have. They have. Uh, that's like that's why thirty-seven they, tight ends on their roster. That's why Andrew Luck, after his nine pinch lung broken inside yeah. sternum yeah. on the outside, because they had three offensive linemen and twelve tight ends. Yes. You know Dallas Clark trying to block a uh, you know a right end and shit. But um, but I I, I I would stay away from tight ends um, from. Uh, now, now, I'm not saying like in DFS, I won't throw a, oh, yeah. I, I, I won't throw a little ten spot on first to score a touchdown, Mo Ali well, Cox, yeah, because yeah. it always pays out, you or know? just he's dirt cheap, and yeah, just, like, exactly, on DFS, like, yep, yeah, yep, for yep. like because he's cost three k or something yeah. like that, or um, like twenty five k, yeah, or twenty five hundred. But no, I mean, I really, I, I think honestly, I think you know, when you when you when you break it down, you look at the Colts. I think um, you know, you're gonna have a lot of you're gonna have a lot of, a lot of Pittman. Um, and I mean, I'm just so excited to watch JTT just blow through it, man. He's just, it's amazing when you see a running back and the Colts haven't had one for a while. And I mean, I don't care what you say about Marlon Mack, it's garbage. I mean, since probably Edwin James, really, there hasn't been a running back there that I was excited to watch, but he runs and he's as proficient. I don't want to say as proficient. Okay. Um, as Derrick Henry but when you think about how many times you can give this guy the ball and he continues to just keep murdering people, and you know we talk about 
oh, hey, he scored two touchdowns. Well, yeah. next week, oh, they're going to figure it out. No, fuck that. I mean, I made a solid G in like, oh, the yeah. course of four weeks by just betting he'd score two touchdowns. Yeah. And he was money every time. So I don't think there's any scares for red zone. You're not going to see Lindsey. You're not going to see uh, Hines. You're not going to see that shit. May- maybe some passing a little bit from Hines, but I think, I think, I think he's going to be bell cow all the way through. Yeah. So to kind of piggyback that, if you're assuming positive game script mm-hmm. for Jonathan Taylor, now they run him regardless. Like even in neutral game scripts, I mean they're they tend to be more run heavy. Right. The Colts have the sixth easiest strength of schedule based on records of last year. So wow, that's pretty easy. Um, and I think from what I remember, they have a very favorable start. Well, their division is pretty cakewalk. I yeah. mean, honestly, you're going to walk I mean, through Houston. They can't, they're not allowed to play the Jacksonville Jaguars because they... <laughs> oh, I don't want to even hear it. Get... I cannot believe you. So know. they open up. Okay, their first two games are the Texans and the Jaguars. In theory... Should be two wins. They're on the road both games, though, which is interesting. Yeah, well, Houston, no, they, saying, they lose in Houston a lot. And they when lose they go in to, Jacksonville. Yeah, I know, I know. They definitely... <laughs> but then, they, then they, they're at home against the Chiefs. Mm. A week three? Yeah, then it gets a little froggy. What, yeah. what's, that, what's that time? Is that a night game? No. Well, right now it's 1 p.m. I oh, wonder okay, if okay. it gets flex. Um, then they have the Titans at home. So they have back-to-back home games. Chiefs-Titans. Titans aren't going to be shit this year. Then they go to Mile High. Yikes. Mm. But then they... Come back home to play the Jaguars. Looks like after a bye week. And then they play the Titans. Then they, then it gets Commanders. Should be a win at home. How do they end the season here? Okay, so they end the season. They play. They go to the Vikings. They play the Chargers. They play the Giants. Hmm. I mean, I like one out of three. <laughs> yeah, the Giants. Well, the Vikings, we'll, we'll see. Well, they're playing the Vikings on the road. But anyway, they open up. So if you're looking for a defense, <laughs> but people will probably draft the Colts. But Yeah, I think a lot of people like looking at the Colts. Yeah, and so. then you drop them when they play the Chiefs. And that's why, honestly, with all these, I didn't even talk about anything defense-related. No, no, just because, no, no. I mean, I think because that, that, you can't talk about how good a defense is because who are you playing? Yeah, it's totally exactly. different if you're playing, you know, if you're going against. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's all, you know, it's so, a weekly game. Yeah. But no, I mean, I, th- I think, honestly, I think uh, I could see them. I mean, they're obviously going to win out the division. Um, the AFC's tough, though. I think I could see them. Uh, I could see them being like a. I mean, obviously, this is taken out of uh, fantasy, but uh, I could see them maybe wild card sneaking in. Um, and their defense, their defense has to hold off some of those the heavy, heavy shooters and the heavy hitters, man. I mean, you talked about already talked about the Chargers. I mean, you got the K, you got you got Kansas City, and you got uh, Josh Allen and his crew. That's that's three very. And also, you got to yeah, you can't you can't even sleep on Denver or um, um. They play the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders, yeah, you can't because that that whole that whole division. And they play the Chiefs. They play the Eagles. The Eagles do what they do though. A lot of times, they're good. This year. I, you never you never know. I mean, I'm excited. I'm always excited to watch Eagles. A lot of my buddies are Eagles fans. And they have the talent and the structure to be good, but I just they always end up doing something weird, like just not running the ball or something like that. <laughs> but no, so yeah, like I said, you know I, that's kind of where I, that's kind of where I foresee, um, you know, Indy. I mean, uh, if you want to take your late hit on Matt Ryan, yeah, I, you know, like I said, he's not going to be, you know, he's not going to blow the blow the doors off. But if you want somebody stable, not bad. But Pittman, I think, uh, you know, getting him getting him at the at the beginning of the four, late, I you know I, I wouldn't be against. I mean, it'd be tough to take him late, late three. But if you're picking last three, you know you've, you've got you've got that availability to to kind of flex that in. So, so that's what I got for the Colts, bro. What you got for us? Um, I got. I'll take the Houston Texans. All right. Well, I'm gonna leave. I'll be right back. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, actually, it's not as no. bad as you think. There's there's some there's some uh, fantasy there's some, uh, some fantasy gems in there there's for some sure. Interesting for sure. Things. So. They promoted the old Bears coach, Lovey Smith, who was the defensive coordinator. Lovey! And they finished 4-13 and last year, which actually, but that roster is damn near To get four wins was pretty huge. I had to sweat. I had them at under four and a half. <laughs> Sweated that like <laughs> a pregnant really? nun. For like, because <laughs> they almost won the last game. Yeah, because then they I was like, like <laughs> I was, my wife's like, why are you watching the Houston game? I'm like, Shut up, honey. Dude, why, are you, why are you watching Fox Sports yes. out of Houston <laughs> with like, an antenna and a like, satellite like, dish? Like, <laughs> Pat my leg like like it's a, like, I mean, I sweat like a motherfucker. <laughs> but anyway, I ended up winning. 
They actually finished third in the AFC South ahead of Jacksonville. It's interesting. They have the 14th easiest, or however you want to describe it, I guess, the the 20 or the 18th easiest or hardest schedule. Um, so Davis Mills was, ha- was halfway decent last year. General Mills. I'm, he's good. He's, I, I like him. So here's the caveat, and here's the, the underlying thing. Who's their OC? I have no idea. I'm sure you'll recognize the name. Pep Hamilton. So Pep Hamilton is mentoring him. Now, if you don't remember Pep Hamilton, he used to mentor Andrew Luck at Stanford and then was at the Colts. Oh, uh, okay. And then the last two years, he was the QB coach and the passing coordinator where? Cincinnati. San Diego Chargers. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And guess who developed that? Yeah, him? yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy... He knows he's a cat. Shit. He's a cat, man. He's a QB and so, whisperer. Like, no, I mean, like, he knows his shit. And so he's the OC. And honestly, I think Davis Mills was actually halfway decent last year. Um, he had 394 pass attempts, which wasn't a lot. They tried to keep the ball on the ground. Like, 16 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. He finished as a QB 29, okay. But finished season as a QB 16, 13, 9, and then 27. But... Was the QB five in week 18, which doesn't, I mean, we aren't necessarily considering that, but he finished well. Um, he's currently being drafted as QB 29, 171 overall. I think he's a streaming option. I think that, and actually, I think their weapons, other than their running back, is interesting, especially with Pep Hamilton there. Because Lovey doesn't give a shit about the offense. He's going to coach the defense. Right, right. And they're going to play hard, but even he's revamping that. The roster, they're still going to be playing from behind. Um, They drafted Derek Stingley third overall. Um, They drafted an O-lineman. Was that at 15? They drafted an O-lineman at the 15th overall. And they're they're trying to revamp. But Davis Mills, I'm not saying he's going to be Pat Mahomes. But I think he could be like a Kirk Cousins if he were to develop. Um, and I think just to kind of parlay that, no, you're not going to draft him in a redraft league. If you're in a two-quarterback league or a super flex or something like that and you need a third quarterback or you wait on quarterback, I don't think he's that bad of a play. I don't think he is. Yeah, he's go- he's going um, last. Like there's right now. Like, yeah, I mean, honestly, think, think about the value. There's no, there's no starting quarterback below him. And so, just to kind of parlay that, that means into a, his weapons. Yeah. So Brandon Cooks, with David Mills last year, who Davis Mills, I'm sorry, he's going 53rd round, fifth round, give or take. Is he, he's kind of fluctuated a little bit. Um, in 2021, he had 134 targets, 90 catches, and a thousand yards, and six TDs. So Davis Mills in a shitty situation has supported a wide receiver. He finished wide receiver 20, wide receiver two. Can he take the step forward? They're going to be playing from behind. And then there's one other uh, person I want to talk to, and that's Nico Collins. There you go. And he's starting to play well, or he's starting to show well. He's Mm -hmm. in his second year. He was kind of banged up a little bit last year. He's currently free. Um. You know, and you hear the reports from camp. You got to kind of, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. But um, there are positive rep- reports. He finished you know, out of the wide receiver, but his current ADP is wide receiver seventy nine. Mm-hmm. So he's free. Like, oh you yeah, take a that's, dart throw, that's last. Yeah, it's last pick type. Yeah, garbage time stuff. And I think in, with a functional quarterback, some could argue Davis Mills probably out of those rookie quarterbacks that were the like Trevor Lawrence. Um, Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson, Davis Mills probably played. He probably, the, I guarantee, he played, played better, but, better yeah. than Zach Wilson. For so sure. like, I'm telling, agree. like, yeah, I think people are underrating it. Like, I'm not saying they're the damn Rams or the no, Chiefs I or anything. You. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is like he did damn with, well with what he had with Pep Hamilton too. I think, I think there could be some value there. Um, at running back. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't even know who I, is I actually going to start. I have written down and I have yikes. <laughs> you <had> nine names? <laughs> I said, I have yikes. <laughs> well, because, okay, so here's the thing. Marlon Mack. Yeah. He's coming off an Achilles in 2020. Um, 
which is never good for running backs in the history of it. And someday we'll give you a Has there a ever killing. been one? No. Well, Dante Foreman is the closest one that's at least... But he's made. never been the same. No, no, was, but yeah, he's, he's, at elite, least, elite, yeah. he's at least having a cup of coffee still. Yeah. <laughs> he's at least walking so, in the bathroom. He's going later. Mm. You want to, but the problem is, is like, I guess he can catch the ball. They're going to be playing from behind. So I would almost want like a satellite back for, yeah. you know, the Texans. They have Damian Pierce, who they drafted out of Florida. Here's the problem. He would be intriguing. They got him out of the fourth round. Upside there, but limited use. Only at 100 attempts for 574 yards in Florida. Obviously, he's highly talented. Now, the Florida coaching staff isn't there anymore. They brought in Mm -hmm. Billy Napier from Louisiana. So, I don't know. Can he be a bell cow? Like, I mean, granted, you're drafting him late. Um, Didn't catch. I mean, he caught passes. It wasn't like he was totally, like, just getting. We're out of of what college? Florida. So Is he he a bigger cat? Yeah, he's kind of like a. But. Yeah, he's kind of a bowling ball type. Uh, I mean, he could be their goal line guy. He's interesting. I, th- I think he needs. He's being steamed too much because they're trying. People are trying to find the starting running back. Yeah, and it's like, do I really want the starting running back there? I I would want him if he was going really late, mm. just to be like some depth. But like, you just don't know. And then there's like Rex Burkhead, who. It, yeah, he's a Philip Lindsay. He's a, yeah. he's a, he's a, he's a yeah. uh, 34th cat. Dari Ngumbulawe. I just mur- birded that. That was not bad. That uh, was pretty uh, good. That was not bad. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I failed. But anyway, <laughs> there is one guy that I want to touch on other than those guys. Okay. And that's actually the tight end position. There is nobody there. There's nobody there. And Brevin Jordan is going free. Okay, he's starting tight end. There's a guy named Pharaoh Brown behind him. Yeah, okay. Um, he didn't play much, play much last year until week eight, but he logged three tight end one finishes in that span, and one week he finished just outside the tight end one at tight end thirteen. If you really punt on tight end, like he finished well, he was a, a rookie. He was starting to come on. So last year, rookie year. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So I'm telling you, he started to. I mean. Yeah, I'm not saying he's going to be great or anything, but he's viable as a streaming option. Maybe a late dart throw if you're looking for a tight end. You thinking like your your second tight off the board, or if you're going if you're going yeah, late, if you go late. two tight ends, or you're looking to stream. Okay, because he's probably not going to be drafted in a lot of things. We'll see. We'll see what happens preseason. Sometimes these guys get a lot of catches and then they get steamed and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But, um, you know, the real quick, other than the defense streaming option based on matchup it's led by lovey you know he drafted some defensive players overall they always play hard for him he's always had you know but how talented they are but yeah. could be improved but not trusted yet that's not 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 uh, i mean pr- probably the best option you can have if you have any sort of defense is having lovey yeah, in there just, just I, at least at least you know i wouldn't i wouldn't touch it but <laughs> no it's it's not 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 one year i mean but pulling in. yeah, but that's that's what I got for them. I mean, just to kind of sum it up, I think they're an offense where the wide receivers are priced very well to get some upside there. I don't disagree. You know, I think uh, you know, Mr. Davis General Mills, um General Mills. yeah, he was yeah, he was surprising. He was surprising. Yeah. He had the balls to fucking just do it. <laughs> he just he, almost like a similar to like a Minshew. He was out there. He's like, "Man, I I, th- I think he I think he had more uh, moxie and uh, oh, yeah. prestige than, than 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 Lawrence did. I think he you know? was like more I mean, he, fuck he, it. Like exactly. this is he what I got. They're scared. <laughs> yeah, that, he's, no, he's that's what I'm saying. All, <laughs> he, he wasn't you know nervous. But he, he only dro- but he only threw for ten interceptions. So it's not like he was. Yeah, he wasn't forcing going. It. I mean, Minshew's like Ryan Fitzpatrick in a way. Like I'm either throwing for seven touchdowns or six interceptions. I mean, Take he, it or leave it. He threw ten. Went through four in one game. Yeah, so, so that's so, yeah you know. <laughs> against the Jaguars. Yeah. <laughs> Just full circle. Yes. <laughs> no, good shit. All right, so we're going to roll into the Titans, the Tennessee <laughs> Titans. Um, they have a, a gentleman, uh, larger shaped, Mr. Derek Henry. Um, another 
fucking monster. This guy is amazing. You ever see him uh, stand next to Mark Ingram, which is a big guy? Oh, yeah. I you saw see that picture? The, yeah. That is so stupid. <laughs> that is so stupid. It looks like a dad and his yeah, child. Yeah, oh, it does. Like, he's such a like monster. Mark Ingram's <laughs> looking at him <laughs> like, he's, <laughs> like he's God. Oh, yeah. Dude, bananas. So let, let's talk about this, uh, this fun factory of stats he did last year. Keep in mind, he, uh, he had seven full games, okay? I'm not talking about the eighth game, the Colts, because he made it maybe halftime, but he kind of got hurt in that, in that game. So I'd like to just take his seven full game stats. He averaged 27 fantasy points per game, per game 10 touchdowns, and 900 yards. 10 touchdowns, 900 yards, and seven games. Yeah. There are running backs that don't hit 1,000 as starting running backs. So if you were to take that, now keep in mind that's a, crazy number but if you were to go ahead and stretch that out over the course of a season that's a pace of 2185 yards 24 touchdowns and over 400 attempts so the big concern everybody has is hey he'll be uh he'll be 28 in about a week or so i think uh i think like a 15th i think he turns 28 uh as a 28 year old running back is 300 plus carries a concern well, it's actually fourteen hundred over the span of his career. Um, I mean, the guy's a beast. So now, granted, he had he didn't really get unleashed until his fourth year. So he went one hundred and ten, one hundred seventy six, two hundred fifteen, three hundred three, three seventy eight. Like that's, mm-hmm. and then he went two nineteen. Well, that was the last year was two nineteen, right? Yeah, that was a seven game. So you yeah. double that even at fourteen games, you're at yeah, it's absolutely insane. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> um, so, but then again, I mean, if he can hold up, and I know they're not throwing the ball to anybody. They have Traylon Burks as a rookie, Austin Hooper. They like, got Woods who will be back somewhere. If yeah, and actually, I think that that's an intrigue. But I'm sure I'll get into that. But. He's worth it. Mm-hmm. He's worth it. So um, is, is he a top five pick? Not top five. Okay. He's top 10. Okay. Or top 12 or whatever. His ADP is about uh, fifth running back. I wouldn't take him top five at a um, half point PPR. In a no, standard, not over, overall top five. He's, he's, no, he's, not, he's, no. he's going late first. That's early what I'm saying. Second. That's where yeah, I think, yeah. I think, think that's, that's fair. Right I think that's fair. I would take him if it was like the... the I would take him on the turn if I was 10. I could see... Like, let's see if, the, if, if Cook and Jones were gone. I would take Cook or Jones before him. I think I would, with receiving in mind, because a lot of my leagues are full. I'm, I'm basing some of it on the full PPR. I think I would rather have Jones or, or if you could, man, if I could, if you could do both, if you could scoop, that'd be tough wide receiver. Yeah. Um, um, What's the highest pick you'd take him? Would you take him first round? Yeah, okay. Derrick Henry, absolutely. Okay. Now, would you take him at your? Uh, would you? Let's say you're picking. What's the highest you'd take him? Let's say you're picking at the six. No. Yeah. I'd probably take him eight to twelve. Yeah. All right, so I'd like to talk about Mr. Tana over the hill. So um, nothing against Mr. Tana Hill, but uh, his ADP is he's going 26 QB overall, uh, or out of QBs, uh, about 16th round. He is, um, if I were to tell you that he's being drafted, okay, Tana Hill is being drafted after Zach Wilson, who has proved nothing, and Kenny Pickett, who might not even be the starter. Is he really? He's currently, yeah, he's being drafted as a 26 overall QB. Now, that, that's based on... I didn't know oh, about Kenny Pickett. I knew about well, Zach Wilson. Yeah, Kenny, you know, it, 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 it kind of flips it up. Oh, okay. Um, you know, I'm sure, if, you know, if, if they decide to start Mitch or whatever as a uh, water boy. Um, but his, here's his problem. There's not a lot of upside. Not a lot of upside at all. I mean, uh, they lost A.J. Brown. You know, they got Robert Woods, but he's coming off an ACL tear um, that they're, he's not going to start. Um, they said he's going to miss some time. So let's let's talk about Mr. Uh, Woods. So he's going right now about 48 um, wide receiver off the board, 123 overall. So you can uh, potentially scoop him early 12. But, uh, you know, an ACL tear in week nine. So week nine puts you, it's like November, close to it somewhere. Yeah, from what I'm reading, he's going to be back in time. Is he? Because what they were saying, so he, he's, he's, he's 30. He's going to be at yeah. 30. Yeah. Um, which, which, you know, I mean, once you're at 30, that is, that is, that's a rough age for wide receivers. When you start to, you, your peak's gone, okay? Oh, yeah. Um, so you got basically your entire wide receiving core, you know, as far as veteran goes, you got Woods, who, uh, he's a run-heavy offense, he's going to be 30. So it leads me to 
Mr. Traylon Burks. So um, he was drafted 18th. Uh, was he was number? Was he the second overall wide receiver picked? Traylon Burks. Yeah, I think he I was. Believe so, was it Olave or? Or, no, no, no. no he uh, wasn't. Uh, uh, with the Falcons guy. No, scrap. It was Drake London, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Traylon okay. Burks. So, you know, I, I don't know. Because I got a question for you, because again, you know, I don't watch a lot of college, but uh, you know, he's drafted 18th first round out of Arkansas. Uh, really, the only exciting part of this wide receiver uh, group. So, what can you tell me about Mr. Burks? Um, there's problems coming out of camp with him. Uh oh. Supposedly, he's got asthma problems. Um, now, I don't know to what extent. I mean, now, whether or not it's true or, like, I don't know. There, he had bad camp reports. Um, but this is this is 2022 in the NFL. A lot of people have asthma. There has to be, I mean, is, is it a level that's bad where he can't perform? And if so, how the hell did that come up now? Something, not... like, to where they had to shut him down. Um, Damn. So, and then also... There were bad reports coming out as far as his work ethic, but maybe that was because of the asthma. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. So, like, be leery of that. Um, you see, I never I never get, like, queasy about, oh, well, this wide receiver they picked is playing behind, playing with the twos. Well, he's a rookie. The veterans are going to start out in yeah. camp as a starter. Like, that's just the nature of the beast. Um, so... You know, pretty much. So, Burks has not been a full participant in any of the Titans' rookie mini camp practices and OTA sessions. Open to the media, and he didn't practice at all last Tuesday. Um. So basically, he has asthma. I don't know how that was not screened. If it was this bad prior to, how yeah, how were you able to perform in college um, then at at the collegiate level if you're. It. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, apparently, it doesn't. It doesn't have to limit you. I'm just saying, like, he had to. Maybe he was not in good condition, and like, I don't know. So, like, I'm just saying he's talented, but there's some weird stuff coming out of there. Um, you'd have just judge that by the summer. Um, they could be, no pun intended, smoke. But like, well, because they got they got him. They got him uh, as far as the depth depth chart goes. He's one. Because Woods, there's yeah. So it's like what I mean. Depth chart like with four receivers as long right. as you're on the field. Yeah, and then they're yeah. So like Burks, no, I mean he's talented. I have shares of him, and, but I've been reading some stuff up on him. And as far as like that asthma, and then he wasn't just that doesn't mean to scare you off, but mm. just pay attention to that. I got you because this could linger because it's weird that he didn't practice. Is weird. Like I'm not a doctor, but it just. There's some weird stuff going on there. It could be nothing, no, but you. just see what comes up. Well, with any camp. any worry is scary when you're you know, especially when you're rookie. Well, just see what happens when actual camp starts, and if he's not starting camp, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a major problem. Well, I mean, luckily they've got uh, on their depth chart. Um, they've got uh, Nick Westbrook, Ekine. They got good old Chester Rogers, Des Fitzpatrick, Racy McMath, <laughs> Cody Hollister, Josh Malone, and uh, Kyle Phillips. So hey, um, no no one that I've uh, really ever heard they of. They have a coach that said he would cut his dick off to win the Super Bowl. And you know what? I think that they're uh, they're a quarterback and a wide receiver away from that. <laughs> uh, no, I mean I, you you can't you, AFC. No, it's uh, there. There is there's yeah. never going to be an AFC team that's going to win like in in that, that we're going to see that's not going to have a prime quarterback. And Tannehill just has proven unfortunately that he can't that he can't do that. You know it's nothing against gotta him. Got to come out of it, the AFC West. That that. Division yeah. is yeah brutal, but um, you know, for like flyers, like if like let okay, they could be, but they let Julius Jones go. Maybe they, I know, um, Odell Beckham's coming off of an injury. Um, if Woods, it seems to be like he's coming along. If Traylon Burks, like <laughs> Nick Westbrook, Akine, <laughs> I don't even know who that guy is. So he had some, he had some stats last last year um he showed up in a couple of games for sure he could be an interesting or maybe it's austin hooper at tight end maybe that's, that's yeah your, that, that's so that's, that's so kind of lead it into that you know but but so so my thing with hooper is what you know i just have he hasn't proven himself really to be and i guess it's less about him, about 
him prove, but Tannehill's never proven that he can throw to a through a tight end. I mean, he had he had uh, Gasecki in Miami, and he, he he barely even tapped his potential. Um, I don't even know who who, who they're running last year. That was year. with Adam Gase. Like, yeah, I don't even know if he who, had who, who they running tight end last year. Uh, why am I drawing they a blank? Ferk Daddy. There it is. Anthony Fixer, Fer- Fixer, 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 Fixer. Fixer. But like, they didn't really have much there. But like, what I'm hearing is that Hooper is, like, the only thing that looks... Maybe because he's the only one at camp right now. Well, I mean, Chigolzi, I'm a Kunko's there. Yeah, and... and yeah. What, about, hey, what about Michael? <laughs> I got a cat spelled M-Y, capital C-O-L-E. What about Pruitt? And Reggie Roberson? <laughs> that's a, that just seems like a fake name. No, that's a Madden creative name. It is, for sure. Um, but, no, I mean, that, that's what's frustrating no. about Tennessee is I, I, I like... Uh, I'd, I'd like to see... Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I like that... The fact that they're in the AFC South and the Colts get to kind of easily walk over, but but they've had they've had years where their defense was so good, their running back is amazing. They don't necessarily need to have the best wide receivers, but they just don't. Yeah, I think it's this is a team you wait on. Mm-hmm. You have to hear about the injuries and see if they sign anyone. Also, I think Tannehill isn't a bad pick late um, in multiple quarterback leagues. Um, I, you know. This defense isn't good. I took, I think I took the under on their win total. But um, another name to know, kind of go back, if Derrick Henry, who was, you talk about the carries, is Hassan Haskins. They picked him out of Michigan. He's the backup. He's the backup. Now, there is Dontrell Hilliard. Yeah, there, I was going to say that a couple But they took years. Haskins because he's kind of, he's not Derrick Henry, but he's a bruiser type back, similar. He would be, I'm not, you'd have to see how camp unfolds, but. He's an interesting late round pick where he'd be a contingent running back, meaning he could be a contingent running back. So if Henry gets hurt, Haskins is the guy. Now he's a rookie, so I don't know if they would trust him full on full board. He could be. He's he has the profile of a bell cow. I mean, that's something like this is a team you just gotta watch and like pay yeah. attention to if you like. But you it's know. not gonna be exciting. You know, you're gonna watch Derrick Henry. It's but if be- Robert Woods is healthy, I'm intrigued. If Robert Woods is healthy and well, Traylon Burks is a stud. I mean, they're they got to throw it to somebody. Yeah, somebody. They got to fucking throw it to somebody. And if Traylon Burks has asthma, not that that's funny, but like if like that, that's like he's walking into the AJ Brown role. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if, but if he's healthy, if he's healthy, in the if he and he, watch if he still has the asthma, he's gonna drop. And then if he starts to show, like that's what I'm saying. Wait and see on these guys. Yeah. Just put them in the queue, <laughs> like <laughs> kind of just other than Derrick Henry, of course. Yeah. And see how this unfolds. Cause they could pick up a guy. Austin Hooper is being drafted uber late for a tight end, which is fine. Like I've taken him in best balls just because as it stands right now, I don't know who they're thrown to. So let the dust settle here with the Titans. They're not going to be good. They're going to be playing from behind. Mm-hmm. I think Vrabel, Brable is a good coach. He oh, tends yeah. to, I mean, they went, tw- I, they went 12 and five last year. So who am I? They were in the number one seed, but they pulled that out of their ass. Also, that was with, that was with, cause you, 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 AJ Brown, I think is one of the most talented wide receivers. He blows me away. Um, and well, I think, yeah. he, I mean, to swap, to swap an AJ Brown for Robert Woods. It's like well, the only reason that Daniel's numbers looked even halfway decent was because AJ Brown would true. go up and get it. Well, yeah. And or he would his run after the catch. The other thing is, is like, and I also think Vrabel reaped the benefits of what like his predecessor Belichick reaped with the AFC East. It was like six wins a year, mm-hmm. no matter what. They're like the the Dolphins sucked, the Jets sucked, the Bills sucked yep. back then. Yep. So like, was twelve and five? Like they're playing the Colts, who literally lost to Jacksonville in the last week of the season. All they had to do was beat Jacksonville to go to the playoffs. Yeah, and I know. shit the bed. I saw a lot of cool They have the Jacksonville Jaguars <laughs> and they have the Texans. So, like, I mean, even if you go 500 after that, mm-hmm. you're going yeah, you're, you're 11 and 6 or yeah. something. So, maybe he's reaping the benefits similar to Belichick to a way. And I'm not, don't, don't send me a message. I think Belichick's the greatest coach of all time. But, you know, I don't, like, I think he did benefit to be how bad the AFC East was yeah. during similar yeah. to like, maybe, maybe Vrabel is reaping the benefits. Like, Oh, you got to beat Jacksonville twice and the Titans twice. And like, you know, 
play tummy sticks with the Colts twice, yeah. like, and see who wins. Like, even if you even if you lose split with the Colts, you're still going five and one in the division. Mm-hmm. I mean, so I mean, it makes sense. No, I got you. But well, that's that's my spiel on the, on the Titans. You know, their defense. You know, Sorry, again, I'm not going to dive in defense. You know, do what you got to do. I look go all day on the Tennessee Titans, baby. You know, it's, it's, it's like, <laughs> here's, here's, you know, just pick a defense. Play, play your competitor. That's all you got to do. Play wherever they play. Okay, so real quick. I mean, you can cut this out if you want. But Mm-mm. here's their wins. They won at Seattle in OT. They beat the Colts mm-hmm. at home. They fucking lost to the Jets. Now, here's crazy where they did have some wins. Oh, man, they did have some good wins. <laughs> Dude, they were they were bad. So, so they beat Jacksonville. They beat they went on a one, two, three, four, five, six game. I forgot they beat Buffalo. Mm-hmm. They beat they whooped Kansas City. Yeah. They beat the Colts again. They fucking beat the Rams. They beat the Colts again when Derrick Henry went out. Yeah. yeah. They they beat the Rams. So they were at seven and two. They beat New Orleans. They go to eight and two. And this is where it gets funny. They come back and lose to Houston. Oh, yeah. So Derrick Henry was out after the eighth game. Yeah. So, yeah, that's when they And had then they that. lost to New England. Mm-hmm. They beat Jacksonville. They lost to Pittsburgh. And then they end beating San Fran, Miami, and Houston. And that was still because Derrick Henry didn't come back to the playoffs. And then lost right? in the first game of the playoffs. I faded him. I won some money on fading those fuckers. Yeah. I mean, anyway, like, sorry. Well, I wasn't was... even expecting uh, uh, Derrick Henry to come back and, and put up the points he did in the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Well, get it, man. What you got? Uh... All right. We got the beautiful, gorgeous Florida Jacksonville Jaguars. So Great last... coaching staff they had last year. Though. Yeah. You know, he was <laughs> two hole in a chick in Columbus, Ohio <laughs> in the middle of the season. Slapping kickers or yeah, what? Kicking I don't kickers? Know what was going on. Didn't he kick the one kicker and fuck up his leg? I, yeah. And he was like basically was <laughs> yeah. telling people that their transcripts sucked or whatever. It's like horrific. Yeah. What a donkey. That's called um, the difference between college and pros. Yeah, you can't say that. He's shit. going to kick it with Chip Kelly now. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they do have some interesting wins last year. They beat the Dolphins, Bills, and the Colts, and they ruined the Colts, sorry, playoff hopes in Week 18. That was the saddest game I've ever seen. Um, you know Wentz could have threw it backwards and had a better QB rating? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, just take a just safety. Not played. Just take a safety, and they could be better played. than a pick six. Exactly. <laughs> they open well, and that was when Daryl Bevel was yep. the coach. <laughs> Another creative player, yeah, exactly. Or creative coach. Yep. Even looks like it. Bevel. <laughs> yeah. Open. They open the season at Washington and the Colts, which this year. Yeah. So I mean, they tend to play well against the Colts, or they give them fits. And at Washington, the Washington Commanders are a shit show. They have a good defense, but they're a shit show. The organization's a shit show. But that's interesting. Um, so Urban Meyer got fired midseason. Daryl Bevel took, or actually, I think Daryl Bevel coached the last four games of the season. Trevor Lawrence was not good, but I don't think it was his fault. No, I don't think so at all. Um, so they end up hiring Doug Peterson, Super Bowl winning coach from the Eagles, who will be so much better. Um, they have the seventh easiest strength of schedule based on last year's, uh, win loss records. They were last in every points per game metric you could ever ask for. The key for this team is, is can they, can Trevor Lawrence, does he have the yips from that season? Like, I don't know, man. Like, um, but I do think they have promising weapons. Um, so Trevor Lawrence last year, threw for 3,641 yards for about a 60% completion percentage, 12 TDs to seven interceptions. Now he did rush for 334 yards and two TDs. We saw that at Clemson, he can rush the ball. He can run the ball. So there is a, there is a, Mm -hmm. there is a stat line for him. He's not a statue. He's currently being drafted QB 18, pick 140, 12th round. I view him as a streaming option or late flyer with upside. Um, with Doug Peterson, I think he Doug Peterson was a quarterback coach. He was an OC. I think in the in you know he worked with Alex Smith. Like I think he can really do what Trevor Lawrence needed his rookie mm-hmm. year. Um, it was such a such a shit show. I'm gonna give Trevor Lawrence the benefit of the doubt at least for one more year as far as like being a bust. Um, which leads me to Travis Atn, their running back, their other first round pick or one of their other ones, which he got hurt last year with a Liz Frank injury. He's 
totally healed. Apparently, it looks, you know, it's not an ACL. It's not. Liz Franks can linger for sure, but when they heal, they heal. So, like, tip, that's why typically they, it's like hamstrings, like rest can really only heal it. Mm-hmm. Um, he has that pass catching role. Um, he has some volatility. So, like, I don't know if he can be the bell cow or some of the scary things. He was a rookie, but he wasn't the best. He didn't have the best blocking on third down out of coming out of Clemson. Um, I don't know if you remember the play where did you watch the Notre Dame Clemson game when actually Notre Dame won? I mean, my body was there. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Jeremiah Musa Karamora had the fumble where he just blitzed off the edge and like pretty much almost caught the fucking pitch. Because, like, I mean, granted, it wasn't a pass play, but, like, yeah. zero awareness from Travis Etienne. So, like, there, I, you know, I'm not a film guru, but there is some concern there. I think he's actually – there's volatility there. Like I said, good, patch, pa- good pass catcher. But, you know, can he do a full workload? Like, he got hurt last year. Um, current ADP is 37, early fourth round. He has a good profile for a running back in that position as far as pass catching and rushes and touches. Um, I think he's priced well. I think he's going to get fucking steamed. So if you're going to take him, if you're drafting now, take him now, mm-hmm. um, especially if he's healthy and he shows well, just because people tend to steam those running backs up because they want to draft wide receivers and then they'll go, they'll reach in the third. Um, so we don't know yet. He's almost a rookie again. We Because he didn't touch the field at all, did he? No, he was a he was preseason. He got yeah. hurt. So, and he's priced like a rookie that hasn't played that we know is walking into it. He's priced similarly to Brees Hall, who's going to be the starting, I would assume, starting running back in uh, the Jets. Um, I think he's priced well. I I have no problem if you go wide receiver, wide receiver, pass catcher, and you draft him. You know, as your first, second, even I mean, depending upon your roster, and take a risk there um, as a second running back um you know he fits the mold of like a deandre swift <clears throat> but we just haven't seen it yeah um and he got banged up so that's the volatility there but i think doug peterson although he used to he in philly liked committees he would play like you'd be so pissed miles sanders would start out with 10 rushes for 75 yards in the first half and then he would give the carries to the next three running <laughs> yep, backs. yep. The so whole roster but he doesn't really have anybody behind him. He has James Robinson. I thought tor- they were Torres Achilles. Yeah, He's- and then he dra- They drafted Snoop Connor First late, off. late. You, you gotta love his name. Yeah, I know. I mean. But they drafted him really late. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there's really not much behind him. I no. mean, James Robinson is a viable running back, tor- but coming off like yeah, he, and he might not. Yeah. You know, you know just, just so so one thing I remember I remember watching uh, and I don't mean to I'll let you get back. No, you're but, fine. Uh, something I was thinking about. So, I watched the game where Joe Burrow. And Lawrence played it. It was like a week, week five. Sure, uh, week four or five. And I'm looking at the stats now because I remember watching that game, and I was like, because uh, I look, I look for poise. Poise is something that's uh, you can't, you can't really, you can't really teach. Okay, now don't get me wrong. Lawrence was in a shithole of a setup. Like he got tossed into the NFL with a college coach and running which, for his life. Yeah. Exactly. So, but when I watched both those games, those two quarterbacks had so much poise. And Lawrence was, he stepped his game up to play against Burrow. And that's what you want to see. Like, Bur- Burrow's a champion. He's a fucking Damn. champion. I, I, don't, I don't have any love for really Cincy or anything like that. But when you watch a player throw his fucking whole heart out there and play like a champion, that was huge. But when I when I watched Lawrence step up, I mean, they're talking, they were 0-4 going into that game. Oh, yeah. So, with, with and I think at that point, the court, I don't even know if the coach was, was fired or was, no, he was didn't beating get fired him yet. Till, or, right. So he's in the middle of whatever, you know. <laughs> just, just. So the shit show is happening, just, and his game stepped up only because of that quarterback on the other side of the field. He's like, "No, I'm as good." Now, don't get me wrong; his yeah. stats were terrible, um, but 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 it was it was it was exciting to watch that game. Yeah. So well, I, th- I think he's got potential, and I think, I'm hoping to I see think, some of it. Yeah. You know, and I have the Texans Jaguars in this in this realm of the, <laughs> but I think there's and I'll lead into it. I think there's viable options, and I think there's, I think. Trevor Lawrence with Doug Peterson, potentially with if Travis Etienne. Now, there's if, ifs here, if, if, mm-hmm. if. I got you. Now, there's, there's some range of outcomes here. But then they signed Christian Kirk from Arizona, and they gave him a boatload yeah, of Yeah, they gave him a well, lot of Well, it just kind of shows what the wide receiver like the market, market was. Yes, there wasn't anybody yeah. signed, so it was like, well, shit. 
I guess we got to give everybody this much money. You're the yeah. six, but yeah. trying to get laid. So yeah. <laughs> like, here's some free backer popcorn. Exactly. And let's head out. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, it's two 30 in the morning yeah. and got to get somewhere. <laughs> like pretty much. Yeah. He got a $20 million signing bonus. 37 mil guaranteed over four years, four year deal worth up to 84. Now we'll see if he gets all that, but 37 mil guaranteed. Jesus. So he had, he played well. Um, he never really came to fruition with the Cardinals, but they were kind of going all over the place. And like, then yeah. they had DeAndre Hopkins. Cardinals is a tough place to be receiver at. But like, so there's going to be, the target's going to be distributed in Jacksonville. It's going to be interesting. So I actually like, so right now, Christian Kirk, I think, is priced fairly. Where'd you get? 89, eighth round, give or take. For their, okay. So. At, is that their number one? Because Shark's gone. Probably. That, so he's so the other one is Marvin Jones, who always overachieves. Where you yeah, he does. I so love like him and he, dude in Detroit. Just whenever he, whenever so, he wasn't hurt, just start him. No, I know. So he's going 163 overall. Wow. In the 13th round. Is he coming and off he, of something, though? He was banged up. I don't know if he was, like, was season-ending banged up. I don't, I don't know. If no, I, um, I don't think so. Maybe not. Um, and they they did pick up Zay Jones from the Raiders, but he's just going to fe- be a field stretcher. Yeah. He'll get like two catches. Um, the target's got to come somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know he, and then they picked up Evan Ingram from the Giants, who I think is a very good late round tight end. I agree. I agree. Um, you can get him free. Yeah. And like I said, the targets now ATN, if he, if he is the guy, we, if he hits the ceiling, he's going to eat a lot of those. I think they pay Christian Kirk for a reason. He's going to get it. Marvin Jones earns targets. He tends to Trevor Lawrence liked him last year. He's like a Corey Davis. Yeah. He just gets his thing. He's going to, he's I mean, going to get his good targets. Round, yep. Good depth. Like Consistent. if you have a bye week and he gets you 12 points, place, you're yep. happy with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's a really good wide receiver for an NFL standpoint, I think. Um, I agree. Evan Ingram is interesting though because they have Dan Arnold behind him, who had some talent but never really panned out. You had Dan Arnold, yeah, Dan from Ar- Buffalo? No, from uh, Roseanne. <laughs> no, <laughs> ass. <laughs> he's out there. <laughs> but didn't didn't Dan Arnold try to play for Buffalo or am I wrong? He was with. Who am I thinking? I thought it. No, he was with uh, the um, Carolina Panthers, I believe. Okay, that makes sense. I got you. <laughs> so, no, Roseanne. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think he's an intriguing car- or, uh, tight end. I think, I think there's room to draft the Jaguars where they're at. They're cheap. They're cheap. ATN's a cheap running back for the starting running back. He's dropping. He's, he's, he's and even even if they're playing from behind, he's the fucking pass catcher. Well, here, here's here's a fun fact. Let me let me hit you with one because you talk about both these teams. So uh, again, this is just this is just ESPN live draft trends. Now no, again, that's this way it's not it, it's close to ADP. So ETN's going. Um, he's going fifty six, and Cooks is going right around the same. So are you taking ETN, Cooks, or Marquise Brown? All three in the same area. Okay, so. That depends on roster construction to a certain degree because you're asking about. And you know what? Hey, uh, Amon's in there too. They're all right at this, right at the six turn, late, late, late five, early six. So you got Marquise, Brandon Cooks, Etienne, or Amon. Man, it that's depends. a tough spot. I have to look at my roster. Mm-hmm. Um, if I need a running back in that play, I've been. I oh, have there's a, nothing. The next is the next. I have a yeah. decent amount of uh, running back shares in ATN. Okay. Um, I've been laying off of them because I. Because It was much. just easy if I go wide receiver, wide receiver. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, later. Like yeah. it's just yeah, there's risk there, but that's best ball. So like on redraft side of things, like there is risk in ATN. Mm-hmm. That being said, if you're picking him up and you feel you want a running back two, you could have two running back ones on your team based on his upside. You take an ATN, Eliza Mitchell, or Miles Sanders. Keep mine. ETN is right now right around the we'll say the sixth turn. Uh, Mitchell and uh, Miles are right around the the late six. Okay, so for me, it's more between. I would take ATN. Okay, 
I'm gonna make sense. I'm but gonna it's between worse. him and Mitchell. Yeah, Mitchell's. Yeah, Mitchell's. Because huge. I actually like Miles. He was priced in like the seventh, eighth round like a week ago. He's at, he's at the early set. It's just though on those ESPN drafts though they it's, go heavy running back, right? So you know, and then that, that's what I'm saying. This this gives it yeah. more to like the the audience that we're probably talking. No, yeah, to. yeah, sure. So that, that's kind of why. No, I like, that's, that's why I, I went with non ADP because yeah. honestly, cause some people might be in that spot where they're like, man, you know what? I could get ETN, or I could I could drop down and take a take a Mitchell, you know, or or Miles sure. Sanders. But no, I, I, I mean, I, like I think the, all of them are. I think ATN's right at the. Well, it's probably. I mean, you were to tear it. Yeah, you're so close in there. I mean, you're 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 at the fifty six. For ETN. I like Mitchell a lot too, but um, Mitchell's just because on. I go more pass catcher heavy unless early on, other than in the first round, perhaps. Um, or like Swift or Jones in the second. But anyway, to get back to the, I got you. I would ATN is viable there. Mm-hmm. There's so you, so you like you like, so you, you say like you you think that in the fifth round he's not a bad running back. No. Okay. I think I think there's huge upside. He could be a he could be a RB one. That's a ceiling. Well, I mean, James no, Robinson. I'm saying, James Robinson did yeah, phenomenal. I'm not saying. I mean, he has a good profile mm-hmm. the, catching, and you know. It's just more or less we haven't seen it, but there's nobody there. Right. There's somebody's, nobody there. Somebody's got to get him. And Peterson likes to do that West Coast offense, so we'll see. I, I think like the it. wide receivers are very well priced. I think Christian Kirk. Now he might get steamed, like you see a preseason game or something happens yeah. and he gets a bunch of catches or but both of them are viable. Where's they're going, going to throw the ball. He I have him as eighty nine around the eighth round. Is that yeah. Yep. Yeah, Which is there you go. There's a starting wide receiver on a team that's probably gonna play from behind that they just fucking backed up the Brinks truck to for no reason. But yeah. no, I mean he's talented. He has a good profile. Came out of Texas A and M, went to uh had some wide receiver one games. It was just more I don't know if he's taking that leap, but I do think Marvin Jones being there. Like he's good enough to, where they can't focus everything on. Yeah, Kirk. he's a possession receiver, so you got to. Yeah, you got to keep an eye on him. Like he's yeah. good enough, and then I think Evan Ingram, he's going free right now, and yeah, take him all day, every day. Yeah, you uh, had as, me take him in a draft of the day, so yeah, that yeah. makes sense because he because he he went to what Giants, right? Yeah, he can't, well, and now, like, did, did he play? Is he, did he play with uh, uh, Manning? Yeah, well, so well he was there. He had a, a huge wide receiver tight end year where there were no like all the pass catchers were hurt. Um. And yeah, he's he never, never really, like, people say he's never really taken, he only really developed because he was the number one guy there when they didn't have any pass catchers. And then I think they drafted Odell after that, and then it kind of, yeah. but, like, when he gets the opportunity, he catches the ball. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, well, they if have you're looking late tight end, yeah, if you're looking mm-hmm. late tight end, no, not then bad. go there. But, and that pretty much sums up the Jaguars. I mean, this division so you're I, saying basically there's one person you'd probably draft out of that whole, out of everything you just... <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just for kidding. the Jaguars? No, I so draft... Said, no. All of them are draftable at their price. Yes. So All like, of so them, you, so you, actually, they are priced fairly to where I think, like, they are all draftable. So you like ETN in the fifth? Now, if he, if he go, what do you think about ETN in the, in the fourth? Is that above where you'd want him? It's about the price point, I would. So, f- so Like, fours, I would draft him, but, like... Is your fourth overall pick? It would be. I would have to see how things. Yeah, you'd have to see what's up. Yeah, but like that's about where I would feel comfortable. Because he's ranging five and lowest yeah. is six. But again, this is you know this is a. The, the but if he gets so steamed. Not... Oh yeah, but I mean we're, we're talking you know again it's it's July sixth. No, that's not so you know, you know running backs tend to get steamed. Yeah, so we got we got you know two months before uh, you know a lot of so, drafts but take Christian off, Kirk so I, like I think is great in the eighth. I like you Marvin. taking ETN or uh, ETN Dalton Schultz or Mooney. Oh, ATN. Okay, I like it. That's where it's, that's where you're drafting it. I got you. And again, it all depends on on roster well, construction yeah. for sure. But uh, good because we have a lot to talk about with a, with a lot of other divisions because this is the probably the worst division. Oh. I mean, look, we're only at an hour and three yeah, minutes, no, and yeah, we're so. done. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, the I mean, fact that we got to that, <laughs> yeah. But but it is, it is some of those things where like you think about, um, man, if you, if you're sitting there and you're you know you're in the fifth and you're like, man, I have a fucking shithole. What what am I going to do? But having somebody to ETN with the upside, yeah. I and like it. I said, I even it. thing if you're looking for a wide receiver late, like let's say you go a little 
running back heavy for whatever reason. Maybe the draft falls to you that way. Christian Kirk in the eighth is bananas. Yeah. Yeah. He's, and same thing with Marvin Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, and Trevor Lawrence is a streaming quarterback, two quarterback league, super flex. He's good late. He's good to draft as your second quarterback. I think he's going to be much improved. Like especially since he has a, because you need a mentor. You need a coach. You can't have a coach. That, yeah. That's, like I said, two yeah. Holland co eds and yeah. Columbus on camera. Literally. That, didn't he, he literally, didn't he kick? His kicker, supposedly, I don't know the whole suppo- story. But then the like, kicker yeah. was like he couldn't, like he actually kicked him, like the the, the thigh or the the whatever. Like the only thing that ever hurts on a kicker is their hamstring. I don't know. know. He's a Who jackass. Yeah. Well, you know that that wraps up the AFC South. So uh, thank you uh, everybody for listening again to the KQ Show Fantasy Cast with Retro and the Queez. See ya.